Vinland Saga, Season 2, Episode 1. Just starting out with opening. I have no idea what to expect from this season. The way that Season 1 ended was so insane. He looks super grown. I think we saw a flash of that guy in the Season 2 preview at the end of Episode uh, 24. Not sure who he is. Where does Thorfinn go from here? I like how he drops the dagger into the ocean, mirroring like Thor's dropping the sword into the ocean at the, the very first episode of season one. And Canute, now king, but on fire. Oh, that was very bizarre. The scar that Thorfinn gave him, memories of Asclad. It's so cool. So well done. You know, even though Asclad is gone, I feel like he's still going to be a really big part of this show in his legacy in Thorfinn. Vinland Saga season two, all the Viking men that you wanted. <laughs> In summary, it's it's Viking men. We have the Viking men that you crave. Hope you like Viking men because we got it. Speaking of Into the Ocean, rewatching the last episode of Vinland Saga, there were two shots, at least, of birds flying over the ocean, but both had sort of different feels. One was when Thorfinn has the chance to escape or leave with Leaf. The bird kind of flies off without him, you know, and he goes back. And at the time, I think I said that that represents a freedom, but it felt like a false freedom because it would be a running away. The second time we see a bird is when he witnesses Asklad's death and Asklad tells him live for something greater. You know, don't live in such a boring place your whole life. There's another shot of a bird flying through the ocean. And my feeling, which I think will maybe be explored, whether I'm right or not in this season, is just how free is Thorfinn. You know, how much is he going to be stuck in his past and his long quest for revenge? You know, he sort of had this arrested development where he never he never got to grow up in a key sense. His childhood was just halted at this fixed point and he's at the same MO, same reason for being his whole life that is now robbed. It was never a real salvation in the first place, but the big question for me going into this season is well, what happens to Thorfinn now? What purpose does he find and is he actually going to be able to find any kind of freedom? It's definitely not going to be an overnight thing with the life he's lived. It's not going to jump to like a fully realized Thorfinn. <laughs> Carve it into the flesh, carve it into the land. Very scenic opening. Ah, yes, I, I see that not much has changed in this world of Vikings and kingdoms. Well, dead eyed. I gotta keep this poem in mind. Wonder what significance it'll have to the overall story in this season. Carve it into this tree. Carve it into these birds. Episode 1, Slave. Oh, and battle is coming. Battle is coming and he's not ready. You know what's evidence of the fact that tragedy is coming? He has a family. And this is anime. This is way too, <laughs> way too peaceful. The biggest bringer of tragedy in anime is an abundance of happiness and comfort. Look, you have food. No, oh, no, no. Oh yes, winter is indeed coming for Einar. Enjoy your last meal, folks. <laughs> Enjoy your last milk and bread. God bless you. Oh, no, no. Oh, maybe it's post-tragedy for once. I wonder if there's a connection to season one that I'm missing. Yeah, but he feels powerless. And it's nagging at him. And she's right, but I also, I mean, I get it. And it's its so painful to think about. It's like a, I don't know. Yeah, look at, look at how great this is, right? This is winning. But, <laughs> but, for the individual spirit, where you are is only part of it. If only you could take full satisfaction in the glory that exists in your life or the, the beauty of your current surroundings. It's, it's just so difficult unless there's an underlying spiritual component as well. Some people can, but for others, I think for many, there's an internal call to adventure. And I think a lot of times the pull or the current that decides the direction of that adventure is related to a potential for, for growth, personal growth, for self-maximalization. And so I'm guessing for someone like Einar, who's witnessed tragedy and felt helpless, there's going to be an ache for the strength that he feels he lacks and a dissatisfaction in participating in the abundance of something that he feels powerless to protect or maybe feels disassociated from in its existence. This is a flashback or is this the second second attack? I told you not to be happy. They just keep doing it to themselves, these anime characters. It was nice while it lasted. Oh, don't go into the clearing. 
This is like a horror movie for me. Don't go in there. I suppose I should act surprised. Insert shocked face here. Ein are just like the a lot of characters in the show, or especially Dorfin and the men in in his village. They wanted something without knowing what it was. Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Go! 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 Man, this is a positive woman. Yeah, she needs him to get out of there with Lada. More self-sacrifice. She had everything she wanted. What a gut-wrenching choice. I mean, I understand they're shocked, but you need to go. You need to leave. You, you should have left. I know this is your chance. Don't let them take her. Do not let them take her. Do not let them. Please, do, please do something. Please be competent. He's not competent enough. He's not competent enough. He's just been hitting trees. Oh, a lot of fighting back. A whole lot of stabbing. Just gets worse and worse. Once again, he failed to protect them. And then this is going to run through his mind. For the rest of his life, as, as a slave, I'm guessing, based on the episode title and what they just said. All the little things he could have done differently. He'll think about all the training he could have done. Not that it really would have helped or would have mattered or was the answer. He'll dwell on these brief moments where he could have run away and saved his sister. He'll blame himself for this. We have another origin arc. We maybe got out of Thorfinn's and inter Aners. And I think that's one of those things with the kind of destiny I was talking about. Where if you knew what it was, what it would take, you probably wouldn't do it. You probably wouldn't ask for it. But by asking for it, I don't know what it is, but the universe sort of has a way of giving you what you ask, but it's more than you bargain for. And you realize there's so much more to it than you thought. It's like you wanted war? Well, here you are. You can become a warrior now. You want an adventure? Well, here's an adventure. And all the perils that that brings. But there's almost no escape from that. I mean, even if you say, I want a peaceful life of safety, well, there's traps in that too. This is going to sound weird, but I can picture it as you imagining the journey in a straight line, but contending with all the, the complexities of life, the universe creates headwinds that kind of force you to curve and ends up being more of a, a circle. You know, kind of an inward inward spiral, even as you're venturing out. Totally powerless. And of course it's not his fault, but it will probably feel that way. Oh, does there some fight in him? Yeah, that fight is just directed inwardly into his own darkness. A fur on a barren land withers with neither bark nor leaves. So too is the man loved by none. Why should he live a long life? When they said move her, I thought they move her outside. They've been move her into the ocean. Okay, let's just move her into the depths of the sea. I think I missed that part in the first aid manual. Step one, listen to coughing. Step two, throw in ocean. Powerless again. What are you living for? Gotta make him look good for the auction, I guess. Mistreat them to the last minute and then make him look pretty. So got some fight in him. What's the plan? What's he living for? Is it revenge? Failed again. It's a very dark mirror of the thing he was talking to his family about, where his mother was saying, look at all the things you have here, and all he was thinking about was adventure. <laughs> Not sure if it's for revenge or if it's for his mother, his mother's dying request. What are you planning on doing with them? Oh, okay. Your homely face ended up saving you there, probably. I'm guessing his path is going to cross 
Thorfinn's at some point. And I can see how this is gonna play into the, the show's growing question about freedom. It's not Leaf, is it? It is Leaf! Long time no see. You remind me of someone. Oh, he's, he's looking for he's looking for Thorfinn. You don't remind me of someone. Wow, the fact that he's on this quest to find Thorfinn still. Admirable. Speaking of purpose, missions. When Einar inevitably crosses paths with Thorfinn, he can relay this conversation. Leaf is looking for you. Where is Thorfinn now? We are Leaf. Sure. <laughs> Whatever you say. Mm. Odd and novel shoulder pat. <laughs> Not the kind of shoulder pat that I usually like, but... Is your body sturdy shoulder pat? Yeah, I would love to, sure. That's why I'm here. I came all this way for you, voluntarily. Anything's better than the last guy. Never has he been so grateful to have a homely face. So far this guy actually seems chill, you may have, I mean, can't call you lucky, but relatively lucky. Whoa, look at this, look at this, we've arrived at the wheat field, it's real. Is this Vinland? There it is, very directly calling into question the idea of freedom. He might be. What exactly are we carving here? What is Einar carving for himself? Despite him always saying he needs to stay alive, but for what? Gotta find a reason. Whoa, he's here! Well, Leaf just missed him. Yeah, the very same. Damn, he looked looks grown up and also beat down. I mean, they have very similar backgrounds to a certain extent. Thorfinn's was just a lot, seemed a lot longer. Thorfinn took a lot longer to get to the same place. And, and somber ending. Oh no, oh, this is this is sad, this is sad, but wait, it might get uplifting. Maybe we're going into the darkness so we can find the light. There's gotta be some hope, right? There's hope in the show, so there could be hope in the ending. Honestly, who could blame you? Oh, here we go, here we go, music, tonal shift! No, no! Without, oh, without love, that's a very important postscript on that sentence. Without love, interesting. Or agape? Is it God's love? Where's the drunk priest when you need him? Well, I mean, maybe that question itself contains its own answer with the word drunk. So I wouldn't say this is the start of season two that I expected. Season one was very amusingly labeled as the prologue, and that was such an intense season. We had all this war, we had political conflict, Thorfinn's journey was insane, we had Ask Asclad, the whole Asclad thing. Now we've traded all of that for farm life. <laughs> It seems. Which is fine, because the journey is not really about the action itself, but the development of the characters. It's their personal journey out of hell. Interestingly enough, for both of them, a hell that they on some level as children were seeking. They're kind of inviting it in, in a sense. Not not blaming anything that happened to Thorfinn or Einar on them. It's more of like a be careful what you wish for type thing. These dreams of being a warrior and, and fighting and being heroic, kind of being embedded in this childhood fantasy version of what, what that actually is and what life actually is. Watching this episode, I feel like season two and subsequent seasons might go further into themes that were very present in season one. And I think if I had to put a name to them, those would be finding one's purpose, through adversity, through more than adversity for these characters, you know, through hell, and that being closely connected to the idea of freedom. You know, there's this mythical land out there called Vinland, and Vinland, you know, it might be a real place. I think it is a real place, historically, but for the character's purposes, it's more than that. It's the seeking of the, the state of something greater, you know, a promised land, which most likely will exist in themselves, through the cultivation of their character and very difficult choices, overcoming major challenges, but within them nonetheless. The ending song talked about there is no freedom without love, and we've touched on themes of love before, and it might not be the love of people or love of things like we would usually think about it, but it could be something more grand, more universal, something like a gape, you know, God's love, something that transcends the immediate circumstances of their lives and the cruelty of the world. Looking at Thorfinn's face, he seems crushed. He seems defeated. Nevertheless, I feel sort of optimistic for the growth of his character, because while he may be in a lower state than ever, my hunch is that something about Askeladd's request 
was granted. You know, something about Asclad imploring him not to be stuck. He is not doing great, I would guess. He's technically not free. He's in servitude and bondage, but at least he's not on the same fixated path he's been all his life of revenge against Asclad. One of the interesting things about the whole dilemma for both of them is that they're in kind of a vacuum of meaning, which is not great, but at least it's not the wrong meaning. You know, at least they're not chasing the wrong thing. Asclad was chasing a point that was essential for his development and his character long term, but was not the solution in itself. Like killing Asclad was not what was going to grant him salvation. I think that was obvious. It's not really clear what Einar is living for. I think he just expressed that his goal was just to stay alive. But then the question is like, stay alive for what? You know, what is the purpose? So they're both sort of in this void of meaning, which gives them an opportunity to explore that this season and to actually find something. At least it's moving. There's raw energy. There's potential, even if their current existence is hell and miserable. Sometimes progress means going down. Sometimes it means that you've been standing on a foundation that was not real, or it was not robust enough and that you could improve it. You could have a grander, better vision that's more in tune with reality and the world and also who you are and where those things all intersect. To move forward, sometimes you have to break those foundations, but you've been relying on those foundations, so you inevitably plummet. But the hope is you plummet down to something that is a more stable rung. You know, you've built the house on sand, so you let it come down a little bit. You let the waves wash it away. You find a better foundation to start building, even if that foundation is lower than where you felt you were initially. Thorfinn might be at his lowest point. Einar also might be at his lowest point, but they're maybe open, they're maybe looking, and interestingly, they have each other. I wonder what their dynamic will be like as the show continues.